Hello and welcome to McLaren Port Huron's Today's Health Program. I'm your host, Michelle Baker. Today I'll be speaking with board certified neurologist, Dr. Marwan Shweto, about Parkinson's disease. Dr. Shweto, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Michelle. Now let's begin with an overview of what is Parkinson's disease. Well, Parkinson's disease is mainly a neurodegenerative condition, so certain parts of the brain or cells in the brain start to die off. Uh, it is mainly the second most common neurodegenerative condition, second only to Alzheimer's dementia. And basically what happens is uh, we need a certain neurotransmitter to be constantly produced in the brain and that neurotransmitter is called dopamine. So with neurodegenerative conditions, cells that produce this neurotransmitter start to die off so we get less and less dopamine and that causes certain symptoms consistent with Parkinson's disease. Now what causes Parkinson's disease to occur? Well, there are mainly two forms. Uh, there's primary Parkinson's disease, which can be broken off to idiopathic, meaning we don't know the cause, and genetic, obviously, which means there's a genetic component, and there has been some uh, research that has shown s specific genes that have mutations. So that's the primary Parkinson's disease. Secondary Parkinson's disease is due to known causes. So these are uh, things like certain exposure to pesticides or insecticides, and there's also high research or increased research on uh, multiple head injuries that have caused Parkinson's disease. So going back to the primary Parkinson's disease, the exact cause is not known as, w as far as what starts the condition. But we do know from a pathology pr perspective that uh, there are various uh, cells that are responsible for producing the neurotransmitter dopamine and those are in the substantia nigra which is a very small nucleus in the brain stem more specifically in the midbrain and the brain stem is that area that connects sort of the brain to the spinal cord so as these cells die off more and more we get less and less of the concentration of dopamine who is most at risk for developing parkinson's uh, elderly patients and by elderly, like we said in our previous interview, anyone above the age of 60, and we will continue to use that term until I reach 60. So elderly patients um, usually, uh, statistically speaking, 1% of patients in their 60s have Parkinson's disease, and this continues to increase. So 4% of patients in their 80s have Parkinson's disease. And also from an epidemiology standpoint, men are more common to have Parkinson's disease. But right now in the United States, there's an estimated one million patients uh, who have been diagnosed currently, uh, even though this is not a very high number, but the general population knows a lot about Parkinson's disease, thanks to increased awareness by famous patients like Muhammad Ali and Michael J. Fox. Now what are the symptoms of Parkinson's disease? Um, Parkinson's disease symptoms vary from motor symptoms to neuropsychiatric symptoms. Uh, obviously we see the motor symptoms first. These are, you know, tremors, uh, rigidity, uh, bradykinesia, which is slowness of the movements, and gait instability. Uh, the tremor is usually a resting tremor, meaning the, if the, let's say the right upper extremity is affected, so when the patient's extremity is at rest, you do get a tremor. But as soon as they go to, for example, grab this glass of water, their tremor goes away. And once their limb is at rest, the tremor comes back. So this is totally different than a benign familial tremor or an essential tremor, where when the patient's limb is at rest, there's absolutely no tremor. But as soon as they go to grab the glass of water, you notice that they start to shake and that's also more common in the elderly and has a very high familiar rate. As far as the bradykinesia, this is a slowing of the movement and it's actually very specific to Parkinson's disease because it's a slowing of the entire movement starting from the thinking that we're going to move to the actual initiation of the movement and to the continuation of the movement. So a very commonly seen thing in the neurological you know, clinic is patients go to stand up and they want to start walking and you see that they're really hesitating. It's like, it's like it takes them five to ten seconds to actually initiate to walk. And that's a bradykinesia. And bradykinesia can affect certain 
you know, movements more than others, meaning some patients can have significant difficulty doing something as simple as walking, but they can ride a bike with no difficulties at all. Uh, the next one is the rigidity, which is just increased muscle tone, and that's very commonly picked up in a neurological examination. And that can produce a lot of difficulties with patients in the nor normal daily activity because then, you know, something as simple as, you know, buttoning a button becomes much more difficult. And lastly, the gait instability, which becomes uh, also significant because that leads to a high risk of falling. and. Um, mainly it's a postural imbalance. Uh, so those are mainly the, the motor symptoms. As far as uh, later in the disease, we do develop more neuropsychiatric symptoms, uh, memory loss, uh, depression, anxiety disorder. The memory loss is significant and it's you know, mainly due to uh, developing Alzheimer's dementia. Parkinson's disease patients have a high risk of developing Alzheimer's dementia, uh, probably six times more than the general population. Dr. Schwedel, this is great information. It's time for a break. We'll continue in a moment.